Two weeks ago, the Dodgers and Padres were locked in mortal combat at Dodger Stadium. After Jimmy Nelson failed to close the game out in the ninth, the two juggernauts headed to extra innings. In the bottom of the tenth, LA loaded the bases with the winning run on third base. In the biggest at-bat of the game, maybe the biggest at-bat of the season so far, in stepped Clayton Kershaw. Welcome to the bizarre, quirky, sometimes frustrating world of National League Baseball. Maybe you hate it, but I love it so, so much. It might not be as picturesque as AL Baseball, but you have to understand that when I watch a game, especially between two teams I don't really care about, I get a strange amount of pleasure from thinking about how I would manage each team if I were in charge. Are you even a baseball fan if you don't call a manager a moron at least a few times a game? And National League Baseball just has more of these decisions for a manager than me. Do you pinch hit for your pitcher in a big at bat in the middle innings of a close game? Should you double switch a good hitter out to let a reliever pitch multiple innings? Should your pitcher bunt to move the runners over? Can you afford to pinch run with a winning run on base if it makes you run out of position players on the bench? All these difficult decisions and countless more are far less prevalent with a DH, and that just feels like it takes some of the human element out of the game. NL Baseball has strategic depth, AL Baseball doesn't, and some people might not care about that, but it's a big part of why I personally love watching and dissecting the sport. The big argument for a DH is it makes the game more exciting, and yeah, if offense equals exciting, then that tracks, AL teams pretty consistently score more runs on average than NL teams. But I don't think that's inherently a good thing. I like pitching, and watching good pitchers dominate. Low-scoring games are generally just as exciting to me as high-scoring games, and I don't think that's a super unpopular opinion, especially for fans of NL teams. Another rippling factor that DH has is the way it affects roster construction. NL teams commonly go through 12 or more position players per game due to more pinch hitting and substitutions, whereas AL teams are based more on their core 9 position players. Going back to the Dodgers-Padres game, Kershaw was only pressed into service because of the insane amount of substitutions the Dodgers had to make after double switching their pitcher into the sixth spot in the order, leading to an empty bench. The previous week, the Padres had a similar situation and had to use Joe Musgrove in left field. On the other hand, AL teams make substitutions comparatively less often and can get away with building their lineup around a handful of stars. I love seeing relatively unknown players grow into the spotlight, and archetypes like the stereotypical light-hitting utility infielder ply their trade, performing their role that's just more important and more prominent on National League teams. Among the many off-putting things about the 2020 MLB season, the one quirk that stood out was watching the Dodgers have a designated hitter every day. That, combined with a consistent interleague play, made all the teams kind of homogenized. I'll get back to this later, but baseball's two leagues having separate rules and schedules, something no other major American sport has, is a unique interesting feature. Changing that in 2020 made the game lose a little bit of that baseball charm, one of the idiosyncrasies the sport has that's rooted in its long, complicated history. And yeah, the price of this is having to watch pitchers hit, which sometimes is kind of awful, but this adds an entirely new skill set for pitchers to have. Guys like Madison Bumgarner or Brandon Woodruff have an entire separate way to distinguish themselves from their peers, by being competent hitters. But pitchers like Justin Verlander and Corey Kluber that have played in the AL their whole careers will never get this chance. And of course, you can't deny that watching pitchers hit leads to tons of unlikely, unforgettable moments. Watching a pitcher hit is kinda like watching a guy chuck up a full court shot at the buzzer before halftime. Yeah, it probably won't go in, but how cool is it when it does? The point I'm trying to get at is that I love watching the slightly more methodical, strategy-intensive National League Baseball. But ultimately, that's because it's what I grew up watching. If I was born 10 miles south as an Angels fan, then I'd have watched the designated hitter my whole life and probably would have a completely different perspective. It's definitely not a hard and fast rule, but from what I've gathered, most fans of NL teams dislike the DH, whereas fans of AL teams love it. So with the implementation of the Universal DH seeming like more of a when than an if every day, I raise the counter-argument, why change anything at all? As I've already said, baseball's two leagues having a pretty large rules difference, and mostly separate schedules, is awesome. It distinguishes the sport from its contemporaries, and gives a legitimate different feel to each half of the league. Interleague games are interesting because they only get to see the Dodgers play, say, the Red Sox once every three years. The World Series has additional through lines since odds are the teams haven't played each other that season yet. All of this stems from the AL and NL's rich history as separate institutions, which harkens back to an era where baseball was pretty much the only major American sport, and was writing a storied history before other sports leagues even existed. The AFC and NFC are clearly just two sides of the same coin, while the AL and NL feel distinct, 
which feels perfect for baseball's more regional, familial style of fandom. On top of team and city rivalries, baseball has league rivalries, no small part of which is the debate over the designated hitter. In my experience, these debates tend to boil down to two people that will never change their viewpoint yelling at each other, so I'll raise the question again. Why dilute what makes baseball unique and hurt the experience of a large subset of fans just for a slight increase in run scoring? Most AL fans like watching AL baseball and most NL fans like watching NL baseball, so the current compromise seems like the best of both worlds. Why implement a change when no change is necessary? Let the fans of AL teams watch their designated hitter, and let me watch my sack bunts and double switches. And yeah, since I know people will bring it up, if the players' union overwhelmingly wants a universal DH for, like, injury purposes, then I guess that's a good enough reason to implement it, but I won't be happy about it. Like, comment, subscribe, etc. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.